My brothers and sisters, it is important also for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a beautiful religion. This religion is not only a set of rules and regulations governing what we believe, but over and above that, it is governing the entire life that we lead. So yes, the primary objective is to develop and to purify what we believe. And thereafter, it extends to every little aspect of our lives. And today, I have chosen to speak on a topic that affects every one of us. Every one of us has bad habits. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you have to admit that you and I have habits that we need to deal with, we need to eradicate, we need to admit that we have. Human nature makes us look at other people and think to ourselves that these people have a bad habit. You see someone smoking, for example, and you thank Allah saying, Alhamdulillah, I am not a smoker. But that man has a bad habit. Not realizing that, yes, he does have a bad habit. It is a very bad habit. It needs to be cured. But at the same time, I need to look within myself regarding the bad habits that I have as well. Don't let it make you sit comfortably. The fact that you are looking at others who might have habits that you consider taboo. Yet, you might be a person who lies a lot. You have a habit of lying. Sometimes people don't realize that they lie because they've become so used to the habit. Good people also sometimes a lie that does not really have so much of damage that is caused. So they think that if it is a lie that is just that which does not cause much damage, it's okay, it's fine. That's a bad habit. That is something that needs to be dealt with. It is something that you need to admit. And in order to admit a bad habit, you are going to have to search. The month of Ramadan is around the corner, as we know. My brothers and sisters, many of us in the month of Ramadan, we like to increase our good deeds. So mashallah, you find people reading the Quran, you find people engaging in acts of charity, you find people reading more of their salah, for example, even that which is not farad, that which is not compulsory, you find them engaging in it. All this is beautiful. But what about eradicating the bad habits you have? That is also a part of your obligation unto Allah. What is the point of a person who's fulfilling so much salah, they are giving so much of zakah in charity, and they are doing so much, but they don't ever look at their bad habits. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, let's admit, our weakness or our bad habit is that we disrespect other people. The way we speak to them is very low. It is not the quality of a Muslim to speak to another human being in a derogatory way. The Prophet, peace be upon him, according to the narration, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was not vulgar, he was not abusive, he was not one who cursed others, he was never using derogatory terms to refer to others. So much so that one day, a person happened to greet the Prophet, peace be upon him, with a wrong greeting. In fact, he was a hypocrite who greeted saying, Assamu alaykum, which means, may death be upon you. So, Aisha radiallahu anha heard this statement and she was absolutely upset because obviously it requires a good ear to pick up what exactly was said. So when she heard it, she responded in a very hard way, which was equal. She says, وَعَلَيْكَ السَّامُ وَاللَّعْنَةِ And upon you is not only death, but even the curse of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ immediately cured her, immediately guided her by saying, مَهْلًا يَا عَائِشَ Take it easy, O Aisha. Relax. Why? What is the difference? We are believers. If these people are hypocrites, you don't need to drop yourself down to their level in order to prove a point to them. No. Take it easy. If they say, Assamu alaykum, all you have to say is wa alaykum. You know, if they have said death upon you, you just say, and you too. That's it. So what happened is, in a respectful way, you gave it back. This was 
something unique because it was not a bad habit of Aisha radiallahu anha. No way. She was going out to defend the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which is our duty. Sometimes the way we defend ourselves or the way we claim to defend the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we do it in a way that had he been here, he would never have condoned it. It's something we need to think about. He would not have condoned it. So therefore, my brothers and sisters, think very carefully, even before you speak. I want to spend a moment speaking about smoking. You and I know that the whole world is going on an anti-smoking drive. We're talking here of the non-Muslims to begin with, and then the Muslims. Why the non-Muslims to begin with? They own the industry, the tobacco industry, and whatever else you have. They will confirm that you are not allowed to sell a pack of cigarettes without writing on it that smoking kills or how harmful it is to the health. And you and I know that as Muslimin, this body you have is an amana. Amana means it's a trust entrusted to you by Allah. He's going to take it away. He has taken it away from millions and billions before us. This body, you look at your fingers. These fingers are going to be taken away from you. They belong to Allah. Allah has given them to you as a trust for a short period of time. Wallahi, it is your duty, my brothers and sisters, to make sure that you provide the best for this body that belongs to Allah. Provide the best for it. The way you eat needs to be good. Don't have bad habits when it comes to food. Some people, they eat food that is so harmful to them in a quantity that is harmful at a time that is harmful. So what that means is, learn to eat food that is beneficial, not necessarily tasty. I was once speaking to one of the young boys who was busy eating chocolates one after the other. And I told him, you know, this is bad for the health. He says, uncle, you, every time I'm eating something sweet and tasty, you tell me it's bad for the health. And then I thought about it and I said, look at the power of Allah. Things that are sweet and tasty are not necessarily beneficial. Amazing. It's Allah testing you to say, do you know what? There will come a day when we might force you to stop having these chocolates. There will come a day when we might force you to stop having red meat, for example. You and I know that at a certain point, the doctor will tell you, hey, for you, no more sugar. May Allah forgive us. May Allah strengthen us. But we used to enjoy it. So if you relaxed and you had a good habit from the beginning, inshallah, in a lot of cases, you'll be able to space it out, right? You might be able to have it right up to the end, but in due proportion. The difficulty is sometimes, like for example, with us, we develop a belly after a little while. You know, you clock 40 years and with the striking of that particular age, you find that your belly starts developing. That's not so true. It is supposed to be a person's health that he is conscious about where you know that if you eat late at night and you sleep immediately after eating, it's not so good for the health. So perhaps you want to find out when exactly you are going to eat and when you are going to sleep to keep a gap enough for you to be able to have a decent sleep as well as a decent meal. Strike a balance so that you look after your health. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. I'm not picking on those with a belly, but all I'm saying is there is something we can do about it. It belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, how much you eat, also sometimes we develop bad habits in that regard. Most of us, myself included, when there is something good and tasty, we keep on eating until we are full. Do you know the teaching of the Prophet, peace be upon him in that regard? He did not used to eat until he's full. And he has actually taught us that if you really want to eat, if you really want to eat to a maximum, then try and divide it approximately into thirds. A third for solids, a third for liquids, and a third for air. How many of us, we've just eaten a third, and then we say, okay, I'm done. To be honest, it's a bad habit we have. Do you love the messenger? Peace be upon him. Imagine if you were in his company and you asked him for advice. And he looked at you and he said, when you eat, only eat a third of solids, a third of liquids, and leave a third for air. What would you say? What would you do? And you would go back and say, that's the advice the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave me. Subhanallah. Wallahi, he's given you that advice. And he's given me that advice. But guess what? When the mandi is laid, we eat, mashallah. When the food is in front of us, we eat, mashallah. 
and sometimes we've eaten to our full and after that the desserts appear and we forget that we've actually eaten I remember I once went somewhere and we had eaten and the desserts came they were far more than the main course in quantity and I looked and I said brother I'm quite full and you know what to sell the product like a salesman he says do you know that when you chew the desserts they will go down and they will find their way into the gaps that were created when you were choosing your food and when you were chewing your food so therefore just go for it go for it and eat and I'm like subhanallah is that the teaching of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so therefore maybe if you are eating you need to know at the beginning of your meal what there is for a dessert so that you can plan for it and calculate anyway let's move on a more serious note the issue of smoking my brothers and sisters those who are harmed and affected by this bad habit please give it up for the sake of Allah I'm calling upon you today very seriously. I don't want to discuss detailed rulings and so on. You and I know the minimum that is said about it is that it is a very bad habit. It is a waste of money. Wasting money is another bad habit. Sometimes people waste money on cigarettes. Some people waste money on handbags. Some people waste money on makeup. Some people waste money on sunglasses. Some people waste money on clothes upon clothes upon clothes. Do not waste your money. I'm not saying don't buy something good. No, Alhamdulillah. You buy if you can afford it. MashaAllah. Enjoy. Liyadhar athara ni'mat Allahi alayk. When Allah has blessed you, it's good to make use of it. People should be able to see, MashaAllah, Allah has blessed this person. But don't waste the money. so much for listening to the short message i pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope and the same applies to all of us jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh